Just who was Alexander the Great? Was he a conqueror, a liberator, a legend, or a bloodthirsty tyrant? Here are 10 facts about Alexander the Great, some well-known and some may surprise you. But after learning about this controversial yet beloved military leader, we'll let you decide just who Alexander the Great truly was. Number 1. The Birth of a God Alexander was born in 356 BC to Olympias and Philip II, but throughout his life it was rumored his father was actually the all-powerful and mighty Greek god Zeus. And being one of the most successful military leaders who was undefeated in battle, that's right, there isn't a single defeat in recorded history. Even Alexander was convinced he was descended from Achilles, and that his father was in fact the sky and thunder god the ruler and protector of both gods and men. Having believed he had acquired divine status by his achievements, he demanded others accepted his divinity as well. Number 2. Early Childhood Education King Philip ensured the young Alexander would receive the best education of the time. Alexander spent his early childhood under the tutelage of Leonidas of Epirus, who taught him horsemanship and archery and had him undergo arduous physical training. His second tutor, Lysimachus, taught the young prince about war through role play, as the rebellious and restless Alexander would only pay attention if he impersonated the warrior Achilles, and Lysimachus had to impersonate Phoenix, or the man who had tutored Achilles. Lastly, starting at the age of 13, Alexander was tutored by Aristotle a name known all over the world for his philosophical teachings. Aristotle instilled in Alexander a thirst for knowledge, teaching him philosophy, poetry, drama, medicine, and scientific investigation. Number 3. Alexander the Teenager What do you think teenage years were like in ancient Greece? Well, boys went to school where they learned music, reading, writing, and arithmetic. By the age of 18, they also joined the army for at least two years of service, but most boys worked hard to adopt their father's craft or trade, such as pottery, metalworking, stone carving, fishing, or farming. For Alexander, however, he was temporarily left in charge of all of Macedonia at the age of 16 because his father left to lead an attack on Byzantium. Furthermore, at the age of 18, he helped his father Philip defeat the allied Greek states in the Battle of Chironia, during which he notably led a cavalry against the supposedly unbeatable Sacred Band of Thebes, and with his men they slaughtered all 300 of the elite Theban soldiers. Think an 18-year-old leading an attack and completely annihilating 300 army rangers. Bonus fact, girls didn't go to school and were taught by their mothers at home. They didn't have value in society until they reached puberty, or the childbearing age. Number 4. The Bloody King of Macedonia Alexander's ascension to the throne wasn't a smooth transition after his father was assassinated in 336 BC. Since he had established himself as a formidable military leader, the Macedonian army stood behind him and his claim to the throne. But he also killed his rivals just in case, including the princes of Lyncestis, his half-brother, and all the rebellions that arose after his father died. Because he took swift action to clean up house, no one dared challenge his sovereignty, and he became king of Macedonia at the age of 20. Number 5. The Gordian Knot According to ancient Phrygian tradition, the Gordian Knot was described as several knots all so tightly entangled that it was impossible to see how they were fastened, and an oracle declared that any man who could unravel it was destined to become ruler of all of Asia. Seized with the ardent desire to untie the knot, the 23-year-old conqueror took on the challenge. But he struggled frantically and unsuccessfully, and the locals watched as he wrestled with the complex knot. Supposedly, he stepped back, proclaimed, it makes no difference how they are loosed, and he drew his sword and sliced the knot in two, sealing his fate as the destined ruler of all of Asia. In another version of the legend, he wasn't so impatient. 
He solved the puzzle by simply pulling out a linchpin and loose the knot. Number 6. World Domination Speaking of Asia, his father Philip, along with most Macedonians, dreamed of conquering Persia and the rest of Asia, and Alexander had been raised on this dream. Persia was a land of immense wealth, prosperity, and power. A very attractive land for an aspiring young conqueror. Besides defeating the Persian army at the Battle of Gagamela and thus becoming the king of Persia, he also conquered the Mediterranean coast, Egypt, Central Asia, and even began an invasion of India. The Macedonian Empire would grow to become the largest empire in the ancient world. Alexander was so obsessed with conquest that even his own men grew weary, and though they reached as far as the Hydaspes River, his army convinced him to turn back and return to Persia. Number 7. A close relationship with his horse? At the age of 10, Alexander is said to have tamed an untamable horse that was considered too wild and unmanageable. And as he successfully subdued the unruly beast, Alexander's father told him, My boy, you must find a kingdom big enough for your ambitions. Macedon is too small for you. He named this steed Bucephalus, and since then the two were inseparable. Alexander rode him into every battle, from his early conquests of Greek city-states up until he reached India, where Bucephalus tragically died after the Battle of Hydaspes. Wrought by the death of his beloved horse, Alexander founded a city in his horse's memory, and he named it Bucephala. Bonus fact! Alexander also built another city and named it after his favorite dog, Peritas. Number 8. Alexander the Bookworm The Iliad was Alexander's favorite book. The historian Plutarch said, He esteemed it a perfect portable treasure of all military virtue and knowledge. His old tutor Aristotle, seeing that Homer's Iliad inspired Alexander to dream of becoming a heroic warrior, created an abridged version for Alexander to carry with him on military campaigns. Number 9. Hellenism While Alexander was obsessed with conquest, he deviated from Greek tradition of enslaving the peoples of conquered lands. Instead, he was more interested in racial and cultural fusion to create one united Hellenistic society, much to his people's dismay and resentment. He encouraged his soldiers to take Persian wives, and he incorporated Persians into the army as equals. He also founded about 70 cities, several named Alexandria, and throughout the empire he spread Greek ideals, thought, and culture, all united under one language, the Greek language, and his own system of currency. Number 10. Death Alexander's death is still a mystery. He died at the age of 32 in 323 BC after suffering 10 days of high fever. Several theories surrounding his death include malaria, meningitis, bacterial infection, or perhaps poisoning. The historian Plutarch stated that four days before his fever started, Alexander had entertained a friend with a long bout of drinking, after which he fell ill and never recovered. With no suitable heir, he was asked who should succeed him. Alexander simply responded, the strongest. Even more mysterious than his death is the location of his tomb, as his body is said to have been buried, exhumed, relocated, hijacked, recovered, and reburied multiple times. After 140 official search attempts by the Egyptian Supreme Council for Antiquities, authorities believe his tomb is in the center of Alexandria in Egypt. Wherever he is, it was not his death that immortalized Alexander as one of the most influential military leaders in all of history, but instead it was the impact he made on the West and the East, and the civilizations that would arise in the centuries to come. Thank you for watching Ancient Military History and 10 Interesting Facts About Alexander the Great. Did any of these facts surprise you, amaze you, or change your opinion about the Macedonian conqueror? Let us know in the comments below. And if you liked this video and would like to see more, please subscribe and leave in the comments which ancient military leader you'd like to learn about next. Until next time, thank you and have a wonderful day.